What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Today, this one's for you guys out there who maybe you have an idea for a game or an app and you're looking to hire someone uh, remotely to help you bring this idea to life. So I have quite a few years experience of hiring developers and artists on these various freelancing platforms such as Fiverr and Upwork. And I'd like to share with you my five tips on how basically not to get screwed and it's going to save you some time and some money when looking for the right person. So tip number one, always try and hire locally. And what this means is that a lot of these uh, freelancing platforms like Upwork and Fiverr, they have um, a system where you can filter freelancers um, based on their location. So what I always do, I always try and find someone that is living in the same city as me. And there's basically two reasons why I do that. The first one is because if you do end up um, working together long term, it's always great to have that option to be able to meet up and um, it's always easier um, dealing with someone in person, uh, especially if you plan on building your own studio and it's, it's great to have um, people to connect with in your own city. And I've actually done this. I have actually met developers on Upwork and we've actually ended up going for beers. So if nothing else, you, you get to make a friend out of it also. And the second reason is that you are more familiar when someone's living in the same city as you, you're more familiar with the standard of living. And when it comes to agreeing on prices, um, that makes things a lot more easier. And also it's easier communication wise when you are familiar with their culture and communication is always much easier. But that, that doesn't go to say that um, you can't find someone in another country. I've worked with numerous developers in lots of different countries and it is on a per person basis of um, the results of that. So yeah, don't be uh, disheartened if you can't find someone in your city. Um, it's just pre preferable that way, in my opinion. So tip number two, and this one's quite important, you want to do a sort of a background check on the freelancer that you potentially want to hire. And this involves um, two things, looking at their reviews and also asking for their portfolio. So in regards to reviews, you wanna make sure the reviews are real, that they're not some generic um, reviews that they could have bought. Make sure that the reviews are specific to um, the jobs that they've been working on. Um, it's pretty easy to tell if uh, reviews are um, genuine or not. And with regards to their portfolio, I've had situations when I've asked um, developers for their portfolio and they would send me random links to games on the top charts of the App Store. And I know for a fact that um, they were just trying to pull a fast one on me. Don't bullshit a bullshitter. So uh, people who are serious, freelancers who are uh, serious about their craft, they will um, maybe have a website or they will have social media proof um, of their um, past projects. So just be mindful of that. That's one way you can really tell if someone is serious or, or not, or he's just trying to take a chance. So tip number three, hire for a specific task. And what this means is that a lot of us, um, when we don't have experience, when we're first starting out and we have this idea for an app or a game, we expect to find someone, a freelancer, an individual who is going to be a jack of all trades, who's going to handle everything from the programming to the UI, to the sound effects, the visual effects. And honestly, people like that don't exist. If you want quality work, um, make sure that you're hiring someone specifically for programming. Maybe you're trying to work out a bug in your game, or maybe you need someone just for your UI, or you need someone to build the architecture of your game in terms of programming. Be very specific because when you dilute that and expect someone to um, be able to do everything, from my experience, I've never been able to find anyone like that. And always the projects that you do get back are really low quality. So when I started to target in on specific tasks uh, for specific freelancers, that's when you really get higher quality work and um, yeah, you won't be disappointed that way. So manage your expectations, make sure that you're hiring someone um, for specific uh, skill sets. And then, yeah, like I said, you won't be disappointed with the work done.
Tip number four. So when I do hire um, freelancers, one of my rules is I'll always do a Skype or a Zoom call with that person because it's hard to get a feel for someone um, when you're just uh, writing emails or messages and you don't actually get a sense of who that person is or if they're passionate about your project. Um, yeah, you actually want to see that person, talk to them directly. And yeah, you want to see if they're passionate about your idea and if it makes sense to work together. So yeah, a 10 minute um, Zoom call goes a long way. And yeah, you can normally, after that call, you, you pretty much know if you want to work with this person or not. The fifth and final tip I have for you guys is that you need to start small. Okay, so don't um, rush into everything. I know we, we always want to jump the gun. We're excited. We want to get our, our app or our game released as fast as possible. But believe me, in the long term, you're going to save yourself so much time and money if you start small. Give the freelancer a small project to do, something that will take him a couple days and um, see if you're happy with that result. You know, uh, If you're looking for an artist, get him to design you a logo or get him to design an icon and, and take it from there. Uh, a lot of times I've, I've given, I've signed off and I'm saying, let's go. And what's happened is that after three to six months, you get back um, the first build and it's, it's a disaster. What the fuck is this? And your money's tied up in escrow and it's like a, a long process. And it's the time that gets wasted is, I mean, it, for me, it's a lot worse than the money because the money eventually get back if you stay on the platform. Um, yeah, so don't don't um, do the mistakes I did. Start small. Make sure you're 100% happy with that freelancer before you move on to bigger things um, that that'll cost you more money and time. So if you guys enjoyed that video, please smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see this face and more content like this. I will see you on the next one. Stay safe and peace out.